Giant meteors. A global pandemic. Bender bending Rodriguez. Science fiction has taught us these are the culprits when it comes to the events most likely to kill all humans. But there are many more threats to life on Earth besides these totally mainstream ones. Some of these are so weird that even apocalypse hipsters haven't heard of them. So let's bone up together on a few niche annihilation theories as we explore seven weird possible causes of human extinction. Number 7. Gamma Ray Bursts Gamma ray bursts are the brightest electromagnetic events in the universe, pumping out high-energy streams of deadly radiation when the core of a massive star collapses. Thankfully, these events take place thousands of light years away, but every billion years, a gamma ray burst is thought to occur within striking distance of Earth. And if it does, and if the star's poles are pointed in our direction when she loads up, well, our goose is well and truly cooked along with all the ducks, chickens, and weasels, too, but not right away. It's more a slow cooker dealy. Earth's atmosphere absorbs this kind of radiation all the time, but if a strong enough gamma ray burst occurred, it wouldn't be able to hold out, and its incineration would create nitrogen oxides, which would strip off our ozone layer. Once that baby's gone, humanity would face the sun's ultraviolet rays directly, so I hope you've invested in sun cream, folks. Factor 10 zillion should just about do it. But wait, it gets worse. Because even if we manage to avoid supercharged carcinogenic sunburn, you can't exactly apply lotion to all the plants on land and the tiny plankton in the ocean, which would die off. No plankton means a disruption to the food chain, a reduction of atmospheric oxygen, and a lot of hungry fish. Oh, and all this is just one of the effects of increased nitrogen oxides in our atmosphere. We'd also enjoy a smog-driven cosmic winter and some delicious nitric acid rain. The scary part is that scientists believe it was this kind of event which caused one of the worst of the five known major extinction events. This one taking place 450 million years ago, the Ordovician Silurian. And if this were to cause the Earth's next mass extinction, we'd only know it was happening after it was far too late. 6. Solar Flares According to NASA, on July 23, 2012, a gigantic solar flare narrowly missed the Earth, and there's a 12% chance we might not be so lucky between now and the year 2022. So what happens if one strikes? Well, since we're talking about it in a list of weird extinction events, you can guess it's not just going to hold us down and start tickling until we pee our pants. Solar flares happen throughout the sun's natural cycle, spewing out a mass of charged particles into space every so often. Now, such an event would have to be pretty massive to bombard the Earth with enough particles to depress our magnetosphere to ground level and cause extinction-level events. But it wouldn't need to be too big to threaten life in another way. Earth was actually hit by a large solar flare just 150 years ago in something known as the Carrington Event. And whereas back then, it mostly caused damage to nothing more than telegraph stations, today, our reliance on technology means potentially trillions of dollars worth of destruction wreaked upon infrastructure. And this leads us to another weird possible cause of human extinction. Number 5. Global System Collapse In 2015, a team from Oxford University's Future of Humanity Institute and the Global Challenges Foundation came up with 12 most likely causes of human extinction. And one of the most startling was their suggestion of a total global system collapse. This term basically describes the breakdown of world economy or society thanks to economic depression, hyperinflation, or a sharp increase in the death rate. And almost any of the events on this list could cause this, such as a major natural disaster, a cosmic event, or even the gradual expansion of an as-yet-unestablished human empire run by an incompetent or aggressive dictator. Anyone else thinking Gandhi from Civilization right now? That guy loves him some nukes. If social or economic disruption did occur in our vastly interconnected world, it wouldn't be long before the dominoes started to topple over other regimes, 
and the mass scale of civil unrest and the breakdown of law and order would surely follow, making it impossible for civilized life to continue existing. In at four, nanobots. Humanity is harnessing nanotechnology, which operates on a molecular level and could bring about the end to all disease, all death, all war, all famine, all the unhappy puppies, and all the sad things everywhere. Or we might end up as one giant blob of gray gloop floating around in space. It's 50-50, really. The gray goo scenario is a hypothetical extinction event which could come to pass if nanobots are allowed to become too self-sufficient, as it describes a situation where a single swarm of self-replicating nanobots attempt to copy and paste themselves repeatedly until the end of time. But obviously to do that, they'd need matter to build from. And since you, me, trees, ice cream, Stone Cold Steve Austin, peacocks, and those little cocktail umbrellas are all made of matter, everything on Earth is up for grabs as a potential raw material for these tiny, out-of-control robo-pests. Such a situation could occur on purpose if a suicidal evil genius reprogrammed a swarm of nanobots to obliterate humanity. But it's far more likely that we'll erase ourselves in this way entirely by accident. My money's on that app chad again number three a biotech disaster if terrorists were to weaponize ebola or construct some kind of lethal grenade that simultaneously gave you aids along with a devastatingly handsome face nobody could resist the world might see a deadly disease epidemic unfold quite rapidly but what's more likely is that we'll create our own biotech disaster through entirely innocent means because some of you are probably causing this to occur right now. The widespread use of antibiotics has helped many people clear up their acne, cure pneumonia, and alleviate a range of delightful STDs. But overprescription has also been blamed for the recent rise of super bacteria, which are immune to antibiotic treatment. MCR is the name of such a strain of super bacteria, and it's officially recognized by the CDC as untreatable. Containment is our only hope, and that it never sees the population. Or it's game over, folks. In at two, crazy, stupid humans. Dysgenic is the term used to describe the study of developed traits and genetic qualities, which may prove detrimental to the human race's longevity, but which are allowed to endure due to our modernizing society. Controversial examples of this include, during war, more healthy men die because the disabled or impaired are left at home, and our society today supports many people with genetic defects who would otherwise have died out thanks to increased access to social and medical care. This kind of talk leads many towards eugenics, supposedly the opposite of dysgenics, which is a belief that the human race should be improved genetically a belief which the Nazi regime famously espoused. The less controversial is the idea that our modern reliance on technology is making humans genetically docile and less intelligent, with IQ rates known to have dropped in many advanced nations over the past 20 years, as many people unknowingly delegate more of their daily tasks to machines and algorithms. Also, it is believed that many aspects of present-day life are to blame for a decline in human mental health, with an estimated 500 million people worldwide suffering some form of psychological disorder. Right now, we treat these illnesses with a range of medications, and while they all do fantastic things to help vulnerable people, and it's ridiculous to suggest anyone should stop taking them, the fact is many of these drugs are relatively new. So we have no idea of the long-term effects they may have on humanity's collective well-being. Of course, all these problems could be alleviated in the future if we develop the oft-mentioned CRISPR-Cas9 genome editing technique to create designer humans. But will this in itself lead to the end of mankind? And at number one, humanity's next step. It has been 30,000 years since humanity's last great leap, when Homo neanderthalensis, or Neanderthals, became extinct 
to leave modern Homo sapiens as the most advanced form of human on the planet. But whereas the previous evolutionary stages of man have been replaced by more developed versions through natural selection, could Homo sapiens be the first to make itself extinct by creating its own successors? If so, this could happen in a number of ways. Man might develop the aforementioned genome editing techniques to such a point that we're able to create genetically adapted superhumans. Maybe like the X-Men, and hopefully we'll keep those sexy tight costumes too. Such a development means that humans who were genetically modified to become superior would become the dominant race, and those who weren't may not become extinct, but they'd certainly end up subjugated beneath a higher class of humans. Alternatively, the next step for mankind may involve humans who are permanently augmented with technology. Consider transplantation of human brains into robotic vessels and where it might end up. Could the physical brain become as replaceable as a knee joint? Might humans transcend their physical bodies altogether and live as some sort of gas? We may even become a race of beings whose consciousness exists only in a metaphysical state. Who can say? What seems certain is that the next evolution of humans won't be designed or determined by natural biological means. But what form they'll take, that's anyone's guess. And that's our list. Are you looking forward to your future life as a cloud of gas or a blob of grey goo? I sure am. Then nobody can body shame me ever again. Oh, and speaking of shame, why not take a look at our recent video on the seven weirdest future predictions? One of them is a fridge that'll make fun of your fat What a meanie!